Hello everybody and welcome to IPR's Game Room. My name is AC and today I'll be talking about the Elephant and Macaw Banner role-playing game. The Elephant and Macaw Banner RPG is based off of a historical fantasy series with the same name, and both are written by the same author as well, Christopher Kastensmith. The Elephant and Macaw Banner is set in Brazil in the year 1578, right at the beginning of Portuguese colonization. Players get to explore the world of colonial Brazil and interact with many of its inhabitants, including many legendary creatures from Brazilian folklore, some of whom are not so friendly. The Elephant and Macaw Banner book is really gorgeous. I know I say this every single time, but I am a fan of shiny things, and this is one of the shiniest things that IPR has. Every page is done in full glossy color and is all gorgeous. Here, let me, if you can see, the cover is incredible and just every single page looks just as amazing. Hold on. All right. I'll find one more for you guys. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And that goes for every single illustration in the book. Is that pretty? It's also got a really great introduction for people who are not just new to the game, but new to RPGs as a whole. There's a whole part in the beginning of the book that explains the terminology that is generally used for RPGs, as well as the specific things that you'll find in this game book. The game uses a skill-based system, and there are no classes here. Any character can potentially learn any skill, and there are three levels to every skill. Apprentice, Practitioner, and Master. Characters level up these skills through the use of learning points, which are given out by the GM at the end of every session. It takes one learning point to level up a skill to the level of Apprentice, two more to level it up to the level of Practitioner, and four more after that to become a master in that skill. Challenges, aka actions that require a role, are called feats. There are four levels of feats in the game, each with its own minimum difficulty rating in the book. To accomplish a feat, players perform a test, rolling three six-sided die and adding up the results. Now the skills that your character has add bonus to your rolls. So if you're an apprentice in something, that's going to add a plus three, a practitioner level will add a plus six, and a mastery will add a plus nine. So characters perform a feat by testing a skill. Makes sense, right? Now, character creation is always one of my favorite parts of starting a new RPG, and in the Elephant and Macaw banner, it's super easy. Characters start out with 20 learning points that they can spend on any skills that they want. However, you're supposed to have one skill at the mastery level, two skills at the practitioner level, and seven skills at the apprentice level, with one of those apprentice level skills being in your character's native language. There's a huge list of skill examples in the book, broken up into categories and with descriptions of what they could be used for. There's also a really great list of languages that were around at the time, with details on the history of those languages and who they were used by. Players then choose two characteristics. These are things like charming, sociable, or loner. These don't have any mechanical use except for to inform you about who your character is. Health in the Elephant and Macaw banner is tracked via endurance. Every character gets 10 points of endurance at the beginning of the game, and this can be added to later as you level up certain skills. There are also 5 points of critical damage. Now critical damage gets taken after all of your endurance has been used up, and if all 5 points of critical damage get filled up, your character dies. In battle, initiative is rolled first, like with most RPGs. Players roll their three six-sided die and add up the results, going from the highest result to the lowest. Players can also choose to be placed at the bottom of the order if they're planning to do an assist action or something similar. Now there's a whole list of all the actions that players can take during battle in the gamebook. Characters can also have supernatural abilities, with there being three main types of these in the game. Faith encompasses those who are dedicated to a religious order, people like nuns and priests. Breath and Aoife are based off of religious and spiritual practices that were known to be practiced by the native people of Brazil at the time. 
This book does a really good job of explaining these practices, and that's one thing that I really like about this game. It's really easy when you're doing a historical fantasy setting to disrespect the culture and place that you're using as your setting, and this book does not do that. Every page tells you exactly where the inspiration for that part of the game came from, as well as the actual historical context of that inspiration. Which is especially important in this game as it's dealing with a time period of colonialization, which historically was not super great. And taking that time period and romanticizing and fictionalizing it, adding magic and the like, can be really rough. So it's nice to get that historical context along with the weapon charts of the game. The Elephant and Macabre Banner gamebook is also chock full of potential powerful items and enemies for your players to encounter, including my favorite enemy, the Bat, comma, Spectral, which is sadly not a ghost bat, but is amazingly just a giant bat, which I think sounds both terrifying and extremely tameable. And I really think that having a big bat friend would just complete my aesthetic, you know? The Elephant and Macaw Banner RPG is your classic four to six people and a GM type of role playing game. And you could really run this game for a good long while. Though, if you're interested, there's also a pre-made one-shot campaign in the back of the book if you're just looking to try it out before committing to a longer campaign. As always, the Elephant and Macabre Banner RPG is available on IPR's website through the link in the description below. Also, Gen Con Online is happening in just a few weeks, going from July 30th to August 3rd, and IPR will be in attendance. We're going to have a bunch of fun events going on, all of which will be live streamed here on this YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those. Though I will also put a link to all of the events that are going on in the description below. Also make sure to check out our other social media like our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and check out our monthly newsletter. There's a bunch of fun stuff on there like podcasts and Kickstarters that we think you guys will like. And remember gamers, the year of 1578 would not have only seen colonialists running around, but also cowboys and samurai. Just something to think about during character creation. Talk to you next time.